on this episode of Dan's Garage, Dan found that this thing was leaking, and so he bought a new one. Apparently, it's a heater core. Let's find out what it means. Hey, Dan, run that intro. Hey, Gearhead, thanks for tuning in. On this episode, I'm going to be replacing the heater core on my 1970 Chevy C10. It's the same for 67 to 72 non-AC trucks, uh, GM and Chevrolet. So I'm going to start on the inside, showing you what you need to do on the inside with the controls, and then we'll come back out here under the hood, and I'll show you what you need to do here. Let's get started. So this is kind of looking up at the dash. You can see the radio opening is up here, your ashtray, your key switch, uh, a hole in the dash, and your heater AC controls. Now, I don't have AC, so it's just heater controls. You can see this middle one is broken off. These were pot metal, so a lot of them did break over the years if your cables got a little sticky or something like that. So we do need to pull this out so we can take that defroster cable off, and I'll show you why later. But for now, we're going to take these two button head screws out, and then we're going to push this back and get it to come down here, and then I'll show you what that looks like. I'll try to do this without... This one is really loose, so that didn't take too much. That's pretty much it. And you just push it back so it'll clear the dash. And you want to angle it down. And once you clear the dash, it should pop down. So I got it halfway out, and it's kind of being held up by the wire and the light socket. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. You can go ahead and unplug this. This is for your fan switch on the right side. <sighs> Looks like that. And then, as you can see, every time you disconnect something, it'll come down a little further. We're going to disconnect the uh, defroster line from here, uh, pull this off, and pull this screw out, and then that'll allow us to uh, loosen it, and I'll tell you why. For this, you just want to put some needle nose on it and kind of wiggle it back and forth, and that'll come right off. It's, uh, we're not going to be able to focus on that. This is a, uh, it's like a washer, but it's got like a little bit of a lip. You can see that. If it doesn't go back on and stay on, then you can try and flatten this out and kind of crimp it with uh, pliers. But we'll uh, hold off on that for right now. And then we need this top one. So we're just going to take this screw off. It's a quarter inch. I'm using a nut driver. It's nice and easy. And be careful when you do disconnect this. It may fling around on you if it's got tension on it, depending on which direction it's going. So once you get that off, you just basically lift this off of here. And that's it, and that's released. You can kind of let the rest hang, let that fling up, and then let's go see where it goes. So I was wrong. We actually want the heat control cable, which is the one on the bottom. So um, that just comes off the same way as this top one does. So I'll just do that and not show it to you. All right, so this is where the cable goes under the dash. Just follow it and it's gonna go through this little opening. So you wanna take that screw off and you wanna pull out that plug and I'll show you why. All right, so you can see the other end of the cable in there and there is no uh, speed nut on it. So I can just slide that right off and we'll get this out of the way. So I got the cable off. I'm gonna leave this on so I know which end goes to the firewall. The other end, I'm just taking the one off, but if you are taking all three of yours off the heater controls, you want to make sure you label each one of them with where it goes. And you also want to take a picture or note the routing of the cables, because they are cables and you want to make sure they don't get kinked. And while they're out, you can go ahead and make sure that they're moving okay. If they're not, you could spray some lubricant in one end and um, kind of hang them up and let the lubricant kind of work through it. If you do have any dirt or anything, you can kind of work this back and forth. If it's kinked up or anything like that, you'll have to replace it. But that's all I need to do for now. We're going to go ahead under the hood and see what's next. Okay, so back out here under the hood. Uh, now you notice I already have my hood off and I have my inner fender wells out. That is a big help because you are going to have to remove this hinge in order to get this whole operation out. There's also a couple of bolts down underneath here that are really hard, if not impossible, to get with the wheelhouse in. And with the wheelhouse, you know, you got those cage nuts like we spoke before about that they do tend to break if they're old and rusty. So I have heard some people cut a hole in the wheelhouse so you can access those. If this has been out in the past and somebody had trouble with it, they may not have put the bolts or the nuts back in, so that may help you out as well. But for starters, we're going to go ahead and remove the two hoses that go to the engine. 
Um, I already drained my system since I broke in the cam, so we're just going to pull these off and move them out of the way. So you want to pull your power off here, and your ground strap is going to stay here unless you're pulling your motor out, which you're not. Um, you do have some bolts here coming around, and then there's a couple underneath too. I'll show you in a minute. On your heater core itself here, if you see, there's two screws up here, and then there's going to be two down at the bottom. Those are the brackets that go around your heater core that sits right inside here. So we'll show you that once we get it off. And this is looking up at the bottom. You do have a bolt there. There's a stud sticking through there, which looks like mine's missing the nut. You got another one over there, and that's where your uh, detent is for the flapper valve. And you can see the uh, screw just beyond that. And then looks like the last screw has been taken out and replaced with a zip tie. So we will hopefully fix that as well. Uh, also, you notice the big tube goes on the bottom, and the small tube goes on the top. Now, hoses, usually on with hose clamps, you can use a flathead or a 5 sixteenths or quarter inch, depending on whatever it is. Make sure the clamp goes back far enough that it's off of the metal. And then sometimes what I like to do is just kind of snug it back up. That way it's not going to fall off or take off on you. And then we got that one out of the way, and we'll get this one out of the way. All right, so I found this online. It shows that the three quarter inch hose does go on the top and goes to your water pump. Or if you have a uh, automatic transmission, it can go to the top of the radiator, except if you have a C10 or a K10 with a 350V without VOI or a C60. And then the lower hose is the 5 8 hose and that goes to the intake no matter which system you have. So we're gonna flip mine over and do it the right way. piece of the uh, where am I? a piece of the housing came off with the bolt so I'm gonna have to glue that back together. I'll go ahead and take this nut off and I'm gonna need another one of these nuts for the bottom because there was not one on there. All right, so, oh, making a mess. So I was able to get this out without taking off the hood hinge, but it was because I had my inner fender out. So if you have your inner fender out, you can drop it straight down and get it out. If you have your inner fender in, you can take off your hood hinge and pull it straight up and out. If you have them both in, you may be fighting yourself. So uh, looking over this, as I said, a little piece of the corner was broken uh, when I took it off. I can see that this seal is pretty shot. I think they're only a couple bucks, so we're probably going to get a kit and replace that. Um, it is a little rusty in here, so I'm definitely going to clean it out. There's um, some evidence of uh, an inhabitant, so we're definitely going to clean that out. Uh, I'm going to make sure the doors are working. We're going to make sure the fan is working, um, which I can see already the cage is broken. And I don't think that would be spinning very well. So um, Got a little bit of work to do, so I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to clean it up. And um, first what I'm going to do is take this heater core out. It looks like the original one from Harrison. So I'm going to take this out and uh, take the brackets to the auto parts stores with me. I'm going to try to hit up a couple different ones and see if I can get the correct one. If I can't, then I may have to do that modification that a lot of guys do because they have bigger tanks. You have to cut the bracket and extend it, weld it together or something like that. Or I may just try to order one online, spend a little bit more money, but get the right part. So we'll see how that goes. But for right now, I'm going to take this apart. All right, so looking along at the heater core, you can see where the tubes are. Um, this is the blower, so you look in this way, it would be the passenger to driver's side. You have two bolts here, and then there should be two bolts here. Like I said before, this one's actually got a zip tie, so we'll cut that off. And this lower one is actually a different size. So we're just going to pull these off, and then we'll lift this up, and the heater core will come out the other side. All right, now we're going to flip this up, and this will come right out. And you can 
see what it looks like, and it looks like there's definitely somebody living in here. But we can get to that in a minute. Oh, that's nasty. Get this out. Oh, there they are. <laughs> All right, so here you can see the how the bracket goes around here. And like I said, the new ones, the tanks are deeper, um, so this, these brackets don't fit anymore. So we're going to bring a bracket with us, and we're going to try and find an original style one. If we can't, then we'll figure it out. Also want to show you this. You see how it goes inside the tube? These do have a little bit of a curve to them. So if you try to put this one on this side, it's not going to fit. It needs to go on the other side. So the tube goes to the outside of this one and the inside of that one. Um, outside of this one, outside of that one. So make sure when you're putting these back on, um, or if you have the other ones, or you're making something work, just make sure you have it the right way, because it's not going to work the wrong way. The area stuff I was pulling out before, you definitely want to be careful with stuff like this. It might be feces, and you definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff in. Um, but you do definitely want to clean this out. So just go in there and pull all this stuff out, and then uh, check your cage, make sure that's working. All right, guys, so I went to two different auto parts stores. Uh, one didn't have it in stock. They had to order it. It was supposed to be there. Well, it's probably there now. Then I went to a second auto parts store, and they said they had one, but it wasn't at that store. It was at another location. So I drove to the second location, and boomtown. So uh, it's a Murray heater core, part number 94559. And what I did is I brought the bracket with me, and at the store... We went ahead and opened it up, and I tested it, and it looks like it's going to work. So this is it, and uh, let's take a close look at the two of them together. All right, so if you look at them side by side, um, the original core is a little bit bigger. The new one's a little bit smaller, but you know what? It's aluminum, so it's going to cool a lot better. Um, and if you look at the tanks, they look almost exactly the same. Um, the tubes are a little bit longer, but that's fine. So for all intents and purposes, this should work great. So let's get it in. So I got everything together. I got the um, heater core in. I tested out the uh, squirrel cage, as it were. I got the ground cleaned up a little bit, so that should ground nice. Um, so this actually didn't have uh, one of the lock washer uh, press-on thingies that goes on there. So I remember this is the side that goes here, because this goes through the firewall. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this on this end and I found one of these in my toolkit that uh, will go on there nicely so I can cap that off and then I'll just feed this wire through or feed this cable through the hole in the firewall and then once this is installed I'll be able to go ahead and make sure that's attached correctly. So that's what we're going to do. Act like I'm putting it together. Actually I'm going to do so I'll just do it. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and install it. I'm going to feed this cable through the firewall hole. And I did put sealant on this, so that's getting taken care of. Let's just go up here. This will go through that hole. Make sure this gasket goes around the blower motor. And there are two studs on here to help you locate it while you're putting it on. So, it's kind of a little bit of a moving stuff around, but once you get the gaskets where they need to be, and those locators will locate you right up. And then you can just put one of these in to get it started. And then just tighten the rest of them up. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, now all we have to do is connect up the uh, wire for the blower motor, and you can go ahead and make sure that works. We're gonna connect up the hoses, and we're gonna make sure that the feed, uh, the supply is the small one that's on the bottom that comes from your intake, um, whether it's the front or the back, whichever it is, and I'm probably gonna have to reroute this. And then the, um, the top is where it comes out, and that's gonna go either to your um, water pump, or it can go to the top boss on your radiator if you have one of those, if that's what your setup is. Um, that way you make sure the, the water is coming out, going in the bottom, it fills it up to the top, and then it comes out the top. So I'm gonna uh, reroute this and get that going. I've got the hoses on the right way. So the supply comes out of the uh, intake, 
and goes into the bottom. It fills up with fluid to make sure all of the uh, capacity is filled up. And then it comes out and goes into the water pump. Or it could come out and go directly into the radiator. But since I got the port on the water pump, I'm going to stick with that. So I'm just going to tighten all this up. Now I notice that the hot water is going to be right up against my fuel line. Um, if I was keeping this set up, that would be a problem. You don't want your fuel hot or boiling. Um, but I'm going to be changing the carburetor and intake on another episode of Dan's Garage. So I'm not too worried about that right now. I just want to put the system uh, together. Alright, so I got everything back together inside the car here. Obviously I'm missing the uh, middle slider and that is for the air and the fan so I can't turn it on. But that's for another episode. This one was just to do the heater core so I could put antifreeze back in it and uh, go ahead and get her driving. That's it for this episode. I got the hoses back on the right way. I got it all bolted in. I got the interior back together with the uh, cable and all the sliders and the screws and everything. So obviously I'm missing the uh, center slider, which actually turns the fan on to have heat. But uh, this was just so I could be able to put antifreeze back in the vehicle. Pretty easy job. It didn't take very long. I was lucky to find one of these heater cores that did have the correct tanks. So I highly recommend taking one of the brackets that you take off of yours. Bring that with you to uh, the auto parts store when you go. That way, if you're getting one of the new ones that's got the big tanks and it's not going to work, you might want to go to another auto parts store and see if they have one. I was lucky on my second try and got one. Um, the first one, they didn't even have one. They were getting it later today, and I just never went and picked it up because I found this one. So um, got pretty lucky on that. It was like 29 bucks. So um, the rest of the parts that I needed, I had laying around here. So um, I did replace the bulb on the inside, so that lights up now, so that'll look nice when I'm driving at night. And uh, I'm just going to put some antifreeze in it, and we're going to move on to the next project on this, which is probably going to be the intake and carb. Um, that's it for now, and thanks for watching. Well, that's it for this episode. You can leave comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, stay positive and keep on wrenching. Hey, see my leg. That's all very good information. I, I'd watch this. I'd be like, wow, that guy's uh, pretty helpful. Will you put me in the bloopers? Oh, I don't have any bloopers because I'm perfect. Hey guys, welcome to the bloopers. Well, if I like what I said before, then I could just use that audio and just use this video. Look, video with no audio. I'll move it like I'm talking. And then I'll show this like I'm talking about it, and then I'll act like I'm putting it together. I'm out of the heater core, so. Ow, that just went in my back. That really hurt.